What's up everybody? Welcome back to Make It Custom. I'm Carl Fisher and today we are back on the 1939 Lincoln Zephyr two-door conversion project. This was a four-door car, four-door sedan, and we are chopping it and making it into a two-door three-window coupe. So uh, what I'm gonna do today and what I've done in previous videos is I've just been working on the chop. So today I'm going to finish the other door top. So this is the driver's side door top. The passenger side is already tacked together. So I wanna bring this one up to snuff, so to speak. And then we are going to do both sides, the actual door frame, which is the inner structure. So uh, you're not gonna to wanna to miss this. It's gonna be a good episode. We are actually gonna cut the pillars apart and fully weld proper inner door structure. And I wanna thank a subscriber for pointing that out. It's something that honestly, I wasn't sure I was going to do, but I think it's a really great practice to, uh, to remove the pillar caps and weld underneath there. So um, anyway, don't forget to like, click subscribe, hit notifications. We've got lots more videos coming at you. Let's get into this. Okay, so if you weren't with me last time when we did the other side, what I've done so far is just cut these non-usable pieces off. I'd left them on there originally because I thought maybe they could be used, but, uh, but they cannot. So like the other side, um, we cut them off right at the bottom. Same thing with the pillar, just above the hinge. Now the front has to be tipped in. Okay, so the other side has already had that done. So I'll have to cut right at the bottom and actually tip this in because our pillars tipped in, our door frames tipped in, now our actual um, door tops must also tip in. So that's what I'm about to do. I'm just gonna cut that out, pie cut it a little bit so that it tips, and then we can start fitting the rest of the door top.
Okay, so here is a little something about chopping cars that, uh, that it's taken me a lot of cars to kind of get. And I'm gonna try and explain it because when you're lining things up here, um, there could be a problem, you know, side to side, like an indifference, like a difference side to side. And you gotta kind of investigate as to like where that difference is. And you could kind of go a couple different paths. So you have to kind of like problem solve your way through it. Um, that's something that I did here. I just tacked everything together here and uh, I noticed that I had too much of a gap between here um, after everything was lined up and I was kind of like, whoa, I, I didn't cut anything too short because I cut the pieces the same as I cut the other side. Um, you know, and, and uh, anyway, I'm gonna try and walk you through my problem solving here. So I, I ended up cutting all the tacks. Um, you can see if that tack was to be lined up about there this is kind of where these pieces were. And so I, I cut them because I, I needed to raise this up. I went and took this tool, where is it? Um, so I, I use this, uh, I don't know exactly what this would be called. Um, but anyway, use that on the other side, adjusted it to the exact height. And this one was, was about 3 16ths of an inch lower. Um, and that, that's too much. Like, I want them to be the same. So um, I ended up cutting this and lifting this up and it actually flows right. Like it, it, it looks right. It's going to be okay there. But then this ends up being quite short. Um, and then the way that this front piece is kind of lined up, I sort of split the difference. Don't mind me. I burned a big hole there. Didn't, <laughs> didn't reset the welder. Um, this lines up okay. I was kind of splitting the difference. But then when I go to unlock the door, where's my Clico pliers? Okay, remember, this is short when this is lifted. Come on, I gotta lift this door. To get this Clico out, there we go. Well, the inner structure is quite far forward here. So what I'm going to be able to do now is I'll have to cut all the tacks on this front pillar and I'll be able to move this whole structure back while lifting it up a little bit. And we should be able to actually line up the back inner structure and lift this to 3 sixteenths of an inch all at the same time. So um, this always happens to me. I never kind of nail it like on the first tack, like I'll notice something that could be improved. So just kind of critical thinking when you're chopping things, where to line things up. Usually it's inner structure. You want to line up the inner structure itself as your starting point because um, for the most part, the sheet metal can be manipulated. Um, there is gonna be manipulation on the inner structure of these doors as well, but it just makes sense that the, uh, the structure itself lines up. <laughs>
Where's the dome? Sarah, what do you have to say for yourself? What do you have to say? I don't know. <laughs> say something to the camera. If you're going to tell the world something, what would you say? What would you tell the world? If you were speaking to the entire world right now, seven billion people, what would you uh, say? I will love it. I love it. I love the world. That's amazing. I love that. All right, so here we go. That piece is all smoothed right in there. It's nice that this is out of 16 gauge. Like I've said before, there was a little bit more room to grind and, uh, and really smooth it out. So uh, when I was lining that up, if the 16 gauge piece was a little bit proud, I left it so that I could actually just kind of grind it and uh, worked out really good. So happy with the door top now. I'm going to move on to this inner structure. So I'm gonna take the pieces that would have coincided with this part of the door top, which is a rear door piece. This is the top of the rear door. Um, and so that piece of inner structure is what I'm going to graft into here. It's, uh, it's interesting looking at both sides of this roof and where the structure meets because it's actually not the same on both sides. I was looking at it and it might be very difficult to see, but but basically um, what I'm seeing is that the inner structure right here on the driver's side versus the inner structure on the passenger side, the driver's side one sits a little bit higher and is actually closer to the roof skin than this one, which is um, it's just a slight difference in manufacturing. And um, that's just, that's just manufacturing. So, um, shouldn't really matter too much, but it was just something that I noticed, like the actual gap in here is less and the gap here is more than the exact same part on that side. Um, just a factory kind of oddity. But uh, anyway, that's what I'm gonna do. I've got the pieces in here somewhere. They're actually right over there. They are the chunks that I'm talking about of inner structure. And uh, so I'm gonna do my best to line them up and uh, get that structure done.
All right, so this is where I'm at. This piece is just slightly too short. Um, and I'm just trying to figure out what is the best orientation, butt it up tight on this end or to let it touch at the bottom. I think that I'm gonna leave the gap at the bottom and let it butt up at this end because it is kind of in line with the cut on the door. So um, I'm pretty happy with the way the gap looks to the drip rail using the piece like this. You did just see me weld this all up and if I had not cut the roof there originally, I would not have welded, the, I would not have had to cut that. So, um, you know, if you're doing one, don't make this cut because that cut was unnecessary before. So I just welded it back together. But anyway, moving on, um, next is just gonna be kind of fitting this. I might have to fill the gap up top here with a little bit of weld because I don't really want to cut this down anymore. Um, and then we'll have to get creative building out the structure on this end as well. So uh, anyway, the piece is gonna work. We're gonna use this and figure it out from here. I think it'll end up being extending the bottom side a little bit and uh, I might have to fill little bits of gaps at this end. Um, yeah. All right, back on the Zephyr window frame. So what's next is this inner structure here, it does, there's not enough meat to attach it here, nor does it sit in the right spot to be a flowing shape. So I'm gonna kind of have to make some little jigsaw pieces that adapt um, this post to this inner frame. I'll have to do some pie cutting to align this inner frame to the front inner frame. There's just a lot of little adjustments here and, uh, and kind of the more time you take and the better job you try to line things now, it really pays off in the end. Uh, you won't notice later on that something has a weird jigsaw in it or, or a little wiggle or something like that. Um, so just take your time and uh, look at it from all angles. The eyes don't lie, compare both sides. See how that side fits versus this side. See if there's any differences. Those are kind of all the things that you gotta take into consideration with the chop. You can't just learn how to chop one car and then chop them all. You know, you kind of have to just critically think about each chop because they're all a little bit different. Um, so yeah, that's where I'm at right now. Exciting news, not 100% sure yet, but early word out of uh, the whole universe is that um, may have found an original, or sorry, an original Zephyr Coupe trunk lid may have found me, which is a huge step in the right direction. And uh, the gentleman that contacted me with it is uh, being very generous with his um, um, fairness in price. So it's like actually possibly attainable. And uh, anyway, Wayne, thank you very much, man. Let's uh, see if we can't get this, uh, this little trunk lid on a plane over to Canada. <laughs> Anyway, let's just keep going. I'm gonna start making these inner pieces and lining up this stuff.
All right, so where I'm at right now, I just used some 16 gauge, made a little bit of a template of this. I just sort of cut back the inner structure till it was kind of just fitting the profile of our new door frame and letting it come back to the edge of this pillar. So um, as you can see, there are areas to fill. I'll probably end up cutting the piece back out again once I've templated these uh, areas to fill so that I can weld them better. Um, same thing in here, I'll have to connect this inner structure to there. The idea is to um, obviously kind of just make a full boxed pillar as this is and as this is just connecting the shapes. So that's kind of all that is. I'm um, using 16 gauge cold rolled material on that. Uh, I'm just gonna continue on guys. Um, once I've got this done here i'll move on to lining this up which will be a little bit of pie cutting and fitting welding and then we are going to cut apart this whole front a pillar and uh and fit this piece once we've welded the inner structure underneath here which is kind of uh the whole point of making these pieces in the last couple videos so that we can peel this back fully weld our inner structure properly and uh put full strength back into the structure of the car. Worth mentioning, you've heard me say it before, dirty finger template. When you need to trace a line or something, if you know your fingers are always your fingers are always dirty when you're working on sheet metal old cars and rust repair. So um, I just like press my finger into this poster board. This is just dollar store poster board. I use it all the time, um, and I just you know I, I can feel where and and kind of press into exactly where that line's going to be, and I can trace it. So when I'm templating stuff. Uh, poster board and uh, dirty finger template is a great way to get an exact shape.
So we have this kind of inner bracing all tied back together. I'm pretty happy with the way that it turned out and um, how this kind of just nicely follows the flow. We've got, uh, you know, it looks good from the inside, even though this is under all the upholstery, we're also gonna be able to put back in this little piece of uh, tack strip back in here so that the upholstery can still tack to that spot. I still have to do a little bit of uh, messing around on the inside of the jam kind of all the way around but we're kind of running out of time for this video so i'm going to stop it here so let's just go over what we've done we've uh, extended it here so that we could get a nice corner weld on it and box that in i might end up pie cutting a little bit here to tip this in a little bit to meet up with the rest at a later date um you know we did just trim it back we used a little bit of um just weld through zinc primer just to get something on the inside of this Typically this stuff, I don't know from the factory if it's even coated, but uh, I guess there's like a little bit of paint on it or whatever. This stuff stays pretty dry. So um, I'm, not I'm not as worried about up here as I would be at the bottom of things. But anyway, we are coating it anyway while we're in here. It's not like we can get the rest of it, but might as well, right? So um, the main purpose of kind of doing all this is to illustrate the point that we are going all the way and uh, kind of welding everything up. Um, even underneath the skin. So here is the piece. This is the piece that I, I peeled out of here. Look at that. You know, that was the factory lap over joint. These were like little backers that they had so that they had something for the lead to get caught on. Um, you know, just cave and pave. That is the definition of cave and pave. And then our new piece here, you know, it lines up pretty good. Well, it'll take a little bit of fitting itself to get this in. Um, there's gonna be some fine tweaks to make it fit perfect. And then it will be just a nice perimeter weld that installs it and, uh, you know, saves us a whole ton of filler as well as gives us full strength back into the pillars. So um, yeah, super excited. More work done on the Zephyr. Um, I'm going to continue on with this project. I'm uh, very excited that a lot of you are enjoying it as well. And like I said, uh, thank you to Wayne. Um, we are working on a deal on a trunk lid for the car. So the fact that we will get a, an original, really great condition Zephyr Coupe trunk lid for this car means that the trunk gutter is gonna be in the perfect spot. It means that there's no guessing on the profile of how the catwalk meets the trunk. Like it gives us more information than just having the part and saves a whole bunch of time. So um, I feel like, yeah, I just owe a big thank you uh, to everybody for um, being on the Zephyr. And um, yeah, we got, uh, actually we've got a little bit of stuff coming up with uh, Brent from Half-Ass Customs. Go check his channel out as well uh, because he will be visiting me once again in October. Uh, he came last year and we did a bunch of work on the ramp truck, but this year I think we're gonna do the exact same thing. We're gonna get a bunch more work done on the ramp truck. I'm hoping to get some wheels on it and uh and hopefully finish the air ride meaning cantilever air ride system in the front and um whatever else we can get done um these are just ideas hope hopefully that uh this is how it goes down so thanks a lot for watching everybody don't forget to like click subscribe hit notifications and uh we'll catch you on the next one thank you so much bye bye